greetings of love and peace be upon all of you. Now the question is, why do people come into a religion? Or why do people stick to a religion? Now most of the time, it's people who have problems with like their alcoholics or their drug abusers or they come from a broken family and they find some sort of religious avenue to make them feel happy. For example, a lot of people turn to Christianity because they've been told that someone died for their sins and they get emotionally involved with this belief and they start believing and going to church every Sunday for that emotional connection and they, they feel that they have something. But in reality, they go back to their alcoholism or drug abuse, of, drug abuse in the week. Or most of the time, people come from broken families and they try to go to church for social matters that will fill that void, that, void, that empty void, that emptiness, that loneliness. But it doesn't really work in the long run. Or most of the time, they try to find Buddhism I'm not having a go at Christianity. They try to find Buddhism or Hinduism or any other spiritual thing like the Hare Krishna movement. A lot of people come to this from Christian backgrounds, from Hindu backgrounds, from, from atheist backgrounds. They try to find some sort of setting in the world, some sort of fitting. But in reality, this is not true because it only works temporary, not, not consistent. So, people come from dark backgrounds and jump into a religion. Or, they have an upbringing where they've been indoctrinated with a certain belief and they hold tight to that belief. No matter what happens, no matter how foul false it is, they'll still hold on to this belief. Or even the other way, they've been indoctrinated in, in the Christian faith or the, or the Hindu faith or the, any other faith and they become atheists because they think, like, how can God be a man? How can God be a statue? How can God be an animal? They think, they have logic and they think. Now, this is why people jump into religion or hold on to a religion or leave a religion altogether. Now, me, I was brought up in no religion whatsoever. No, my parents did not indoctrinate me with any religious belief or anything like this. But I remember as a child calling out to God directly. Calling out to God it was a natural thing that was in built in my soul to know God and to know that He is absolute, an absolute one. There's no other parts of God. This was my belief as a child, with no one telling me. Now, growing up as a teenager, I would call out to God, try to connect with God, try to always ask God for guidance. Now, it's not until a religion was preached to me that I thought, this can't be God. God cannot become a man. God like, doesn't need to become a man. God can do whatever he wills, but I'm saying God does not need to become a man to get to know us. He's the creator, we are the creation. So he knows us better than we know ourselves. So my belief was that God is absolutely one, the true self is spirit, and the spirit wants to return back to its originator. This was my belief, this was my philosophy. Now, people try to find ways of life that will fit their needs. Now, before I became a Muslim, I was already Islamic in my beliefs. I believe that God was one. I believe that the true self is spirit and this one day the spirit will return back to its originator. I even believed in the character, Jesus Christ. But I was not a Christian. I was not a religious person. I believed the philosophy I had of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was that he was a spiritual leader who came to earth to teach man how to live, to teach the Jewish people how to live because the Jewish people lost their way. They had the law of Moses, but they did not follow this law. So Jesus came to implement and reaffirm the law of God to the Jewish people. Now for me, I was not one of these people who came from a dark past or a I was an alcoholic, I was a drug abuser. But I always wanted to enhance my spirit mentally and myself mentally and myself physically in every way. Always trying to enhance the spirit. Now before 
I was reading Deepak Chopra, who taught that there's spiritual potential and that you can lead your spirit, knows your potential, so live, connect with your spirit and connect with the Most High. Now I'll meditate and contemplate on why I'm here, who God is and who I am. So anyone who came with religious doctrine to talk, talk to me about, I'll say no, I believe in one God Almighty, the creator of the heavens of the earth, and I know who I am mentally, physically and spiritually. So I don't need your religious rubbish. So then I'll meditate and contemplate and try to enhance myself every year, mentally, physically and spiritually. Then what happened was I thought that's to be more that's to be more power. I can't do this on my own. I need to return back to God and ask him directly again, as I used to as a child. But then as I got older, people started preaching and teaching and I thought this is not this is not God. I'm gonna go within myself and start to call God different names, like God, Universal Power, Universal Manager, Most High. I'd always rely on the Most High to influence my life and the Most High or the Universal Manager to conduct my life and to guide me on the straight way. So then I thought, okay God, do something for me this year. Make me more powerful in my mind. Make me more powerful in my spirit. Enhance my life in every way. Now within 24 hours of getting this, this 24 hours of asking God for guidance, someone who knew my character gave me a Quran. Now anybody who gave me a religious piece of information, I would disregard it straight away. I'd be like, no, I don't need this. I'm, I'm already centered with God. I already know who God is and I know I'll live my life according to this. Now, I thought, okay, I'm just going to read this book. See what's in it. Now what I found was my exact beliefs that I had before were mirrored with the Quranic teachings, with the Islamic teachings. Well, this, is, this is what I believe already. This is, I believe that God is absolute one. And when I talk about one, I, talk, I don't talk about number one. I talk about uniqueness. Throughout the Quran, God is one. Even through all the other scriptures, all the other religions, God is one, absolute one. But then the followers and, and, and people later on started to change and make God three and one, two and one, one and three, whatever they try to think, they say God is a man, this is not, this is not true. God is absolutely unique, he's the creator and we are the creation. And God is the creator, so if you create something, say you create a computer, you need a manual on how to work it. It's inbuilt with the program. The manual is out to this to follow that program, follow that manual, so the program can run smoothly, so you don't have any corruption. But a lot of people download a lot of different thoughts and programs and corrupt the inner self. So Islam means submission to God. We are all born in the state. So we are, I, I, I say that Islam is not a religion, it is a way of life, a system and a law. So we are in, it's a, it's a state of being. So we need to return back to our true selves. Even Jesus Christ said, you have to be born again to get to God. Meaning, forget this worldly persona that you've conducted, that you've achieved, to achieve. Return back to your true self, which is spirit. Be born again. Because we are all born pure. Islam teaches that we are born pure. We are not born in original sin. This is some sort of pagan thing, belief. We believe that there is we are born pure and we can work to righteousness. We work on bettering ourselves and acknowledging God. This is our purpose in life. Our purpose in life is to acknowledge God, to remember God and to serve God in the best manner. And the final prophet, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was all for all mankind. Every other prophet came to their, their people, their nations, to convey the message that God is absolute one. Abide by his law and follow the ways and the examples of the prophets. This is basically the same message throughout time. Now, people can think, you know, no, Jesus died for my sins. Oh, no, you're talking rubbish. Oh, no, I don't believe in God. Well, the atheist, the reason why you're atheist is because religion or doctrine is illogical. It does not make sense. Or your parents or society has made you think different. But if I throw you into the ocean, and you have no one to call out to, you would call out to God directly. You would say, God, please help me. If you're there, please help me. The, the atheist prayer is always, God, if there is a God, 
save my soul if I have a soul. This is an atheist prayer. So in the time of need, they pray directly to God. This is the inner self, the inner spirit calling out. You wouldn't be calling out the particles or the ocean or the, the atoms to help you as you glorify atoms and science on earth. This is what you uh, will be glorifying. But now you need to focus on God and God will help you in this life and the next. And the Quran is a system and a law that helps and governs the whole humanity. It gives you a code of conduct, how to conduct your life and how to be a person in society and to be a helpful person in society. This is what Islam teaches. Our purpose in life. It gives clarity about the universe, creation, life after death. It gives you clarity about all things. Now, people have to really open up their hearts and open up their minds to what Islam truly is. Don't think about it as a religion. Think about it as a system and a law. Because we all follow a system and a law. We all follow different laws of the world, governments, schools, traffic lights. But we have to focus on what does God want. People say, yeah, I believe in God, but that's it. It's not about just believing in God. We have to implement God's way in our lives. And Islam teaches how to do this. So I'll ask you, open up your heart. Open up your mind. Think and contemplate while we're here. And then return back to a true nature, which is Islam. Submission to will to the will of Almighty God. Now, we all humans, we're all brothers and sisters in humanity, and we need to treat each other accordingly. So I thank you for watching. I hope you can open up your heart, open up your mind on what we are doing here. This is Isa James, born Matthew James, but I named myself after Isa, which is Jesus. And I've always had a connection and always admired the character of Jesus Christ, as I said earlier. So this is let you know that we are all born pure, natural, similar to the will of Almighty God, and that one day our, our spirit will be return back to God. We ourselves will return back to the originator who created us, who deserves all worthy of all praise and glorification and supplication. We do not worship human beings, we do not worship angels, we worship the Creator, the one and only. And we don't need any crucifixion or any to, to rid our sins. We turn directly to God for our mistakes and He is the most forgiving, the most merciful. And He's also the most just. So think about it, contemplate, read, study, knowledge. Islam is knowledge based. The more you know, the more you love it. And the more you don't know, the more you'll just dwindle. So, open up your hearts. Get rid of the bias or the sentimental attachment you have to certain things. And open up your heart and mind, as I repeat myself. But Almighty God, God you all. Love and peace be upon you all. Thank you for watching.